Hi guys, it's Shay. Okay, so um, I'm doing a video on Smule, which is going to be put on YouTube, because um, for some reason I can't get the proper storage on my own devices. So I'm going to try to use this instead. I just wanted to talk about Kynebox disease. Now, Kynebox disease used to be a fairly rare condition. Uh, unfortunately, I've noticed in the last maybe two or three years, it's become a little bit more common. Now, I got the disease in 2011, when it was quite rare still, that to the point where when I had to see my doctor, the doctor had to have his interns and his residents with him to teach them about the disease because it was common, but because I guess there's been a couple more people coming in to get checked that he realized that it's going to become um, quite common. And it's, it's a disease that's now spreading a bit more. So he wanted his students to learn because most doctors haven't even um, had a, a, a I want to say customer for some reason hadn't had a patient that had this kind box disease in their whole career. There's been many doctors that are like that. Now, first before I say anything, I want to do like a service announcement. If you are a cashier or if you are in any type of job where you use your hands regularly could be a cashier, could be a secretary, could be receptionist, could be just customer service, but you're just using your hands so much and you're noticing a little bit of pain. If you are noticing pain in your wrist, if you're noticing pain in this area and this area here, if you're noticing that it's increasing or if you're noticing that when you, that, that it's throbbing, um, and no matter, say you've even gone to a physiotherapist to get it looked at and you finding that it helps for a day and then you go back to work and then it triggers it again and you're still in pain. Basically, I want you to go get it looked at. Go to your family doctor, get an x-ray. Whether it's a waste of time and there's really nothing wrong and maybe you're just overusing the hand a bit and it's a bit sore, I still want you to get checked out. And the reason why I say this is because I had a doctor who wouldn't even test me. They would not do an x-ray, they would not do an MRI, and I begged them saying, I'm in so much pain. I'm in more pain than I should be. And this is not okay. Please help me. Instead, they offered or they told me to go get one of those braces that you can get from like Shoppers Drug Mart or, or from um, any of your, um, even Walmart, just any type of health place that has a brace that you can wear. Um, that's what I was told to do, which didn't do anything at all. Like it was a waste of time. It helped a little bit, but it, it, it didn't help enough. Physiotherapy didn't help enough because I would just go back and re-injure my hand the next day at work. So I'm telling you, if you are feeling pain and you know by your own body, you know, we know, okay, when we're having pain and that's not something that we're used to, we know something's wrong. You need to trust your instincts, okay? Don't just be like, eh, maybe I just worked too hard today and just brush it off because that's how you can lose your hand, Okay. I'm not trying to scare you. I'm just trying to teach you that this is an important thing to do. You need to get yourself checked out. And I, like I said, had a doctor who wouldn't even bother. And by the time I finally got a doctor enough to care to get me looked at, it was almost too late. And I almost lost my hand to full-blown arthritis because they wouldn't have caught it in time. So be adamant. If your doctor won't take it, don't do a test, you make them take a test. This is your health. This is not their health. So you need to be tough and you need to trust yourself and trust how your body is and how it reacts to certain pains and get tested and get checked out, okay? Bottom line. Now, we don't really know what causes Kynebox disease. Now, it says here Kynebox disease is a condition where the blood supply to one of the small bones in the wrist, the lunate, is interrupted. Bone is living tissue that requires a regular supply of blood for nourishment. If the blood supply to a bone stops, the bone can die. This is called I'm so going to butcher, butcher this. It's called osteonecrosis. Um, damage to the lunate causes a painful stiff wrist and over time can lead to arthritis. Okay, so what it didn't list in that description that I got off the internet, um, it doesn't say what happens to the bone when it dies. And this is what most people don't understand. And honestly, I've literally done my own personal polls. Like I polled people and asked them like, what happens when a bone dies? They just basically said the bone dies. <laughs> no, you're wrong. And this is what people need to understand. When a bone dies, it doesn't just sit there dead. You know, it literally, like this is your bone, okay? 
it doesn't just stay there like this. It actually goes in fragments. So little pieces start to fall off. It starts to fall apart. Like when you crumble a hard piece of clay from the ground, when you step on it, it crumbles into a bunch of pieces. That's what your bone does. Each bone carries a disease that killed it. Okay? So here's your row, okay? So I'm just imagine that these, okay, these are the four bones in that first row on, of your wrist because there's a row and then there's like a cluster here. So this is your lunate, okay? This is the bone on this, on this side here. This is the bone here. And then this is the little teeny tiny one called the pisiform, which kind of piggybacks this one. So this one doesn't actually touch your lunate. It just kind of is floating there up on the top, on the, on the edge here. So, a fragment hits this one. Now this one starts to die. Fragment hits this one. Now that one starts to die. This one, I was lucky. I didn't have it die or at the time. It was still okay. So these have to be taken out. Now you're left with this little pisiform and, and a little cluster of bones above it. That's called a proximal row carpectomy when they remove a whole row of bone. Now, that's what happened to me. But when they remove that row, because the lunate cluster, or sorry, not clustered, uh, fragmented, now they have to go and clean out that whole area and make sure that they get every little bit of the fracture, every little fragment, every little piece and, you know, part of that puzzle that is the lunate or used to be the lunate. So there's extensive cleaning. So I had that done. I had an emergency surgery. They had to remove the row and they had to do a cleaning. Now, after surgery, you're going to be in a lot of pain. Recovery is a bitch. Hey, just it's just the way of life. It's it's a bitch. It sucks, especially the very first day after a surgery. Now, your what happens when you get a surgery? There's two ways they give you the freezing, and I'm going to try and switch the camera a little bit to show you. Okay, so you can either get a needle right about this area. Okay that is injected into you, and that's gonna numb your whole entire arm so that they can do the surgery. The second way that they can give you this needle is not here, but in your armpit. Um, this hurt, but armpit hurts a lot more when they're doing the injection. I was full blown in tears when I, they did the armpit on my second surgery. But the first surgery, they did it here, it numbs the whole hand. I got it done on two o'clock in the afternoon, and the next day, it takes about, I think it's something like 12 hours or something like that for it to wear off. Um, but because it was so extensive, it actually wore off around 6 o'clock in the morning. Like clockwork. Like I've had this surgery done twice. And like clockwork, it's 6, 6 o'clock in the morning the following day is when I'm excruciating pain. Now, they actually are supposed to tell you this, and not all doctors do. They're supposed to tell you that you are supposed to be woken up around 4 a.m. the next day to have... Um, your medication so that when it does naturally wear off around six o'clock in the morning you already have your medication in you so it helps to transition you so you're not just feeling pain you have something to numb it to help you and then that's why you take it every so many hours so by the time you wake up at six o'clock in the morning you know you take another pill four hours later and you're still within your your time limit so you're still okay you're still numbing yourself until you're healed enough to handle the pain they didn't tell me that. So I woke up in excruciating pain. It literally woke me up to the point where I was delirious, screaming bloody murder. Like my family thought I was being murdered in my bedroom. I was screaming so much and crying. And they had to shake me awake because I wasn't fully awake. I was delirious. And so that's how I had to do it. Now, um, I'm going to make another video and kind of talk more about the causes and more about how I dealt with it, okay? So I'm signing off for now and I will continue this in the next one. Bye!